Welcome back everybody to another lesson in C Sharp programming. In our previous lesson, we learned how to use if statements to allow blocks of code to execute based on if an expression with a single condition evaluated to be true. And in today's lesson, we're going to expand on that by coding an expression to have multiple conditions using the logical operators. So let's begin. To start, let's list out the three logical operators that we're going to go over. We first have the double ampersand, which is our logical and operator. We then have double pipe characters for our logical or operator. And then we have the exclamation point by itself as our not operator, which we don't want to confuse with the not equal comparison operator. Now let's go ahead and label all of the operators that we've learned so we don't confuse them with one another. Remember that the equal sign is the assignment operator plus, minus, division, and multiplication are the mathematical operators. We last learned about the comparison operators from our previous lesson. And we now have our logical operators. When using the logical operators, we have to understand is that they will always work with Boolean expressions, just like the ones we have coded here from our previous lesson, where we prompted our user of a grade letter based on a numerical grade that was entered in from the keyboard. Now, if we tried to use the logical operators with an expression that did not result in a Boolean value, like a mathematical expression, then our code will result in a compiler error and our program will fail to run. Now, as I go over these logical operators, I'm only going to use two conditions within a single expression to demonstrate how the logical operators work. The first logical operator I'm gonna go over will be the AND operator. So let's have a look at our program from the previous lesson because there is actually a small flaw that allows the user to enter in invalid grades. For example, if we look at our first if condition that checks if the grade is greater than or equal to 90, well, unless you're giving out extra credit on a 100 point scale, a grade of 200 would not really be valid, even though it still would result in an A. And then if we look at our else statement, that executes any time we enter in a grade less than 60. This also includes negative numbers and you will still score an F. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If I run the program and enter in 200, we still will have scored an A. And if I run the program again and enter in a negative number, we still will have scored an F. So how do we fix this? Well, there are a couple of ways we could approach this. But I'm just going to focus on one particular method because I can actually demonstrate each of the logical operators with it. So before we evaluate what letter is going to be assigned to the grade, let's check the grade and see if it falls between 0 and 100. And if that's true, then we can prompt the user with the letter that they've scored. Otherwise, we can prompt the user that they've entered an invalid grade. So let's write another if statement that's going to check that the grade is greater than or equal to 0. And then using the logical AND operator, let's also check that the grade is less than or equal to 100. Now, we're going to enclose our other if statements inside of this new one. Because if the new if statement evaluates to be true, then we're going to prompt the user with what letter they have scored. Otherwise, we can prompt our user that they've entered an invalid grade. You have entered an invalid grade. So let's test all of this out. Whenever I enter a grade that's between 0 and 100, like 80 for example, the first condition in our new if statement evaluates true because 80 is greater than or equal to 0. And our second condition also evaluates to be true because 80 is less than or equal to 100. And since both conditions evaluated to be true, then the entire expression is true which allows us to now evaluate what letter will be prompted for the grade. And that is how the logical operator works. Whenever you use the AND operator, every condition surrounding it must evaluate to be true in order for the entire expression to be true. Because if one of these expressions evaluates to be false, then the entire expression will be false. So let me show you what I mean by that. If I enter in a grade of 105, well, the first condition evaluates to be true because 105 is greater than or equal to zero, but 
the second condition evaluates to be false because 105 is not less than or equal to 100. And since that second condition is false, then the entire condition is false and therefore we prompt our user that they've entered an invalid grade. Now let's look at the OR operator. The difference between the AND operator and the OR operator is that when you're using the OR operator, only one of the conditions needs to evaluate to be true in order for the entire expression to be true. Now having said that, I can't simply change this AND operator to the OR operator because I'm actually right back where I started where I can enter invalid grades again. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I enter in a grade of 105, well, 105 is greater than or equal to zero. So that condition evaluates to be true. But 105 is not less than or equal to 100. But since I'm using the OR operator, since 105 is greater than or equal to zero, we have one condition that's true. Therefore, the entire expression evaluates to be true. And then we're going to receive a score of A. Much like the opposite, that if I were to enter in a negative number, well, this negative 10 value does not evaluate the first condition to be true because negative 10 is not greater than or equal to zero, but it is less than or equal to 100. So therefore, we're going to score an F. So in order to fix this program to correctly use the OR operator, we're going to have to change how we are checking the grade. In other words, let's check if the grade is less than zero or if the grade is greater than 100. And if that's true, then we can prompt our user that they've entered an invalid grade. Otherwise, we can evaluate what letter the grade will be. So now our original if statements that prompt the user what grade letter they receive is now part of the else block. So all we've really done is swapped how the blocks of code are going to execute. So let's check that out. If I enter in a grade of negative 10, negative 10 is less than zero. And even though negative 10 is not greater than 100, since the first condition of our new if statement evaluated to be true, the entire expression evaluates true and we can prompt our user that they've entered an invalid grade. Much like the opposite, that if I enter in a grade of 105, well, since 105 is not less than zero, that first condition will evaluate false. But since we're using the OR operator and 105 is greater than 100, the second condition evaluates to be true, making the entire expression true, and therefore still prompting our user that they've entered an invalid grade. So now if we enter in a grade that's between zero and 100, both of our conditions inside of our if statement are going to evaluate false and therefore our else block will execute and we can prompt the user with what grade letter they have scored. And lastly, let's look at the not operator. Simply put, what the not operator does is that it takes a Boolean value and reverses it. Meaning that if we had a Boolean value of false, it's going to get flipped to true. And then if we had a Boolean value of true, then it's going to get flipped to false. So what if we wanted to move our if statements that prompted our user what letter grade they've scored back to where they originally were? And we still wanted to use the logical OR operator. We're going to have to enclose our if expression in another set of parentheses, and then we can place the exclamation point outside of the inner parentheses. Now I know this might look a little confusing, but if you read the expression from left to right, it does make sense. It basically says that as long as the grade is not less than zero or greater than 100, then you have a valid grade and can prompt the user with what letter they've scored. Now, before I move any more code around, I'm gonna go ahead and test this so you can see what I'm talking about. Because right now, the program does not work like we would expect it to. If I were to use a grade of 100, 100 is not less than zero, so that first condition evaluates false. 100 is also not greater than 100. So the second condition also evaluates false, which means the entire expression is currently false. But since we're using the not operator, we take that false value and flip it to true, 
And even though we're using a valid grade, we're still prompting our user that they've entered an invalid grade. So let's swap the blocks of code back around so that our program will run correctly. Let's move the line that prompts our user that they've entered an invalid grade back into the else block. And then let's move our if statements that prompt the user what grade letter they've scored back into the if block. Now let's test all of this out. If I were to enter in a grade of negative 20, negative 20 is less than zero, making that first condition true. And since the first condition is true, then the entire expression is true. But since we're using the not operator, the true result gets flipped to false, and we've prompted our user that they've entered in an invalid grade. And if we enter in a grade of 105, the first condition evaluates to be false, but the second condition evaluates to be true since 105 is greater than 100. So now the entire expression once again evaluates true and the not operator will flip that true result to false and we will still prompt our user that they've entered an invalid grade. And finally, let's run a valid grade through our code. With a grade of 95, we check if 95 is less than zero, which is false. Then we check if 95 is greater than 100, which is also false. So right now our entire expression results in false, and then the not operator takes that false value and flips it to true, and our grade can be evaluated to see what letter we will prompt our user with. And that's where today's lesson will end. I hope that you were able to follow along and now have an understanding of how to use logical operators and have multiple conditions inside of a single expression. If that evaluated to be true, then give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and then stay tuned for the next lesson where we will cover how to have blocks of code repeatedly execute using loops. Take care everybody.